Hellblade 2, what is it? Well, uh, it's a piece of dog shit. It's a $50 five hour long graphical demo for the Xbox Series X and was made by Ninja Theory who were bought by Microsoft back when they were in their pay to win phase, buying new studios every other week. And one of the games Ninja Theory was best known for was Hellblade, which was pretty dookie, but since the development team was so small, they got a lot of undeserved praise. And that leads us to today where they released what could best be described as that one mission in Red Dead Redemption 2 where you're walking on a beach in Tahiti, but imagine doing that for four hours. Less than I'm actually kind of surprised that one of the main complaints for this game was that it wasn't long enough, since it has you doing one of three things the entire time. That being walking, fighting, and doing puzzles. And I gotta say, there is nothing that makes me want to dive headfirst out of a first floor window more than being forced to do puzzles. They are not fun, they've never been fun, and I will never understand why anyone would want to be forced to go down a narrow path to solve a Rubik's Cube that can only be done in a certain way, and you are completely unable to deviate usually because invisible walls and then repeat that sequence like I don't know 80 times over the course of four fucking hours that's right I'm saying this a lot less than <laughs> seriously though by some chance if a developer is watching this video right now do not put puzzles in your game nobody wants to do them I do shut up get out now let's talk about the one thing that this game gets semi-decent, the combat. And if you played the game, you'll know that that was one of the two things that they tried to perfect. I'm talking about the graphics and the animations for the combat, but after a while, the combat gets repetitive and predictable. Like you get jumped by some guys who decide to come at you single file, just taking turns waiting on the sideline, all while having some random bitch in the background backseat gaming you. Dude, stop backseat gaming me, dude, right? I'm trying to fucking focus and I can't because everyone's whispering in my god damn ear to focus. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. And that reminds me, I need to talk about the sound design. Some people are saying that the sound design in this game is good, but you literally cannot hear anything that's going on most of the time because the whispering. And I know I was talking about the lady, but there's another voice that pulls me out of the game completely. And I'm talking about Snoke from the sequel trilogy. Would you give your life to these outsiders? Join the dark side. If Skywalker returns. This game is trying so hard to be a movie that every time they try to implement gameplay, it brings the story to a halt and breaks your immersion. If you even had any to begin with, because the story consists of dream sequence after dream sequence after dream sequence. It's like a bad movie at a film festival. And then we got the final piece of the puzzle, walking. This game consists of mostly holding up on the left stick. Like, I'm not even kidding. I started to fall asleep playing this game, so I just held up on the stick while I passed out. So kudos to Ninja Theory for making a game so easy that you can finish it by falling asleep. All you need is a rubber band and some scotch tape. And I don't know what these guys were doing the entire time they made this game other than making millennial TikToks. So I'm finding it kind of hard to point to a single mistake that was the cause of this game's demise, but if I had to pick a moment, it would probably be when someone said something along the lines of, I don't know, uh, we should make a Hellblade 2. I'm not going to leave it off on a completely negative note here, so I will recommend two games that are essentially what Ninja 3 was trying to do. The first one is pretty well known, but I'll recommend it anyway. I'm talking about God of War Ragnarok, which is actually a game I reviewed before back in my early days of content, probably when you see Jormungandr. But since you guys are so special, I'm just going to give you the bullet points. The story is great, the gameplay is solid, the boss battles are perfect, and the puzzles are my 13th reason why. Now on to a game that I think doesn't get enough love and most of you probably don't know. I'm talking about Rise Son of Rome. That game came out in 2013 and still looks not a day over 11. Oh, I was actually coming out What's here going to on? Pick up a cupcake. This game had everything. It had great storytelling, great combat, it was cinematic, the graphics were amazing, the voice acting was perfect, and the story was easy to follow without ever holding your hand, and best of 
of all, there was zero puzzles, uh, or at least none that I can remember. I, I don't know, I haven't played the game in a long time. Also, you can get it for way cheaper since it's an older title. And as far as story slash movie centric type games go, I highly recommend Rise Son of Rome and urge everyone to stay away from Hellblade 2, unless you just really enjoy having your eardrums molested by a Sith Lord. <laughs>